I'm with Michael Martin, the, the National Wood Flooring Association. We are at uh, Domatex Asia China Floor 2014. Michael, how you doing? I'm good. How are you, Dave? You know, I may talk to you for a long time. This is the first time I sat down in two days. <laughs> it's nice to sit, isn't it? it is, nice <laughs> is this your first show? This is the first time I've been to Domatex Asia. Yes. What's your take on this? Um, well, it's interesting. I think we're, we're starting to see a shift in the market where um, we're seeing a lot of American woods exported over and then coming back to the States. And that's, that's not necessarily anything new. But I think what we're seeing is the use of a lot more uh, American lumber in the last few years, really since the Lacey Act. That's what a lot of the, so what the, law of the conversation has been here with us with some of the Chinese manufacturers. The Lacey Act, and before we get to that, um, talk about the organization, just so everybody listening is on the same wavelength. It is a most interesting organization in that players up and down the chain, uh, the channels of distribution are involved in. I think that's a most unique organization, at least in this industry, and I think one that opens doors that maybe others don't have open to. Right. Well, I think, yes, uh, the National Wood Flooring Association is 3,000 member companies, uh, we have membership by company, but it's the whole supply chain. So it's manufacturers, distributors, contractors, installers, importers, exporters, uh, inspectors. So anybody who's engaged in the, in the business of selling or installing wood flooring is part of the organization. Um, I think that allows us uh, to be nimble in the marketplace a little bit as far as getting changed through an industry. Because we have all the players sitting at the table, we are able to share with each other what's happening in different parts of the supply chain and, and address those issues. It seems like it's also an international organization. Maybe the national is a misnomer. Yes, well, you know, we, are, uh, we were started in the States 29 years ago, um, but we do have members in more than 38 countries around the world. So um, we are global, yet most of, our, most of our membership, especially on the contractor side, is based in the U.S. Now, you are an exhibitor here, and the pavilion, yes. the NWFA pavilion, seems like it's grown every year. It has. We actually sold the pavilion out and we took additional space uh, down the aisle from us to accommodate some additional exhibitors that wanted to come with us. And uh, we've really seen tremendous growth there. And what we do w in this particular show is we partner with the American Hardwood Export Council so that uh, the partnership really is for us then to bring domestic U.S. manufacturers to this show uh, to help them with their export business and to make the connections with manufacturers, particularly in the, at the Asia show, a lot of them are working to make connections with manufacturers who are importing U.S. lumber to then uh, create the product and export it out. So then your exhibitors are basically manufacturers and they're doing business with who over, uh, distributors over here? Uh, distributors, manufacturers, it's, a lot of them are selling, while they may make flooring in the States, they also tend, they, most of the people that are, take advantage of this opportunity also have uh, the availability of lumber, uh, either they run a lumber yard or they're tied to a lumber yard, and they work to export that raw material product over here as well as the wood flooring. So then that's a, that's a big growth area for your members, your domestic U.S. members. Yes, I mean, actually during the recession, the, the export business held a lot of our, our, our guys together. Uh, exports have continued to rise over the last five or six years uh, to be a significant piece of their business, especially when the U.S. economy was so bad. The Lacey Act, you had mentioned that earlier, a couple of years ago, big news, we saw it all the time. We don't hear it as much now, but does that, I can't imagine that, that means it's gone away. No, actually I think what's happening is it's really, it's starting to now really play out in the marketplace. Um, you know, the legislation takes a while to, to, to work its way into the, in through the channel and through the supplies, but the, uh, I think that's one of the reasons we've seen so much export business coming from the States to China. Um, and all of, a lot of the Chinese manufacturers that we've met with at this show are telling us that you know, they really don't source lumber from anywhere that's questionable anymore at all. Um, so they really like sourcing U.S. lumber. They know it's safe. They know it's sustainable. They know it came from a, from a typically renewing state or forest. What, what, what do you think people think of the Lacey Act? I mean, we saw this uh, Gibson guitar. We've seen lumber liquidators, it would lead me to believe that one might think this is a sort of a selective 
I won't say political, but certainly unusual way to run an airline. It, or is that just a bad observation on my part? Well, if you look at the Lacey Act itself, you know, it's nearly 100 years old. It's been around for a long time, and, and the Lacey Act hasn't changed. It's just been applied now to our marketplace, which is different. But it's always been a protective, environmental protective type act to um, make for sure that we're not depleting the raw materials. And in, in the beginning, I actually think it was about ostrich feathers. And so it's, it's, it's had a very long, interesting life, but no one really looked at Lacey so the last few years uh, until it came to the forestry issue. That really took on a whole different life of its own um, around the, the forestry piece. Do you think that obviously the marketplace then has changed as a result of this and there's less opportunity for somebody to, I guess, pursue a, a, a company because they pay more attention to it? It's, it's definitely less acceptable, and we see a lot of companies in the States that don't want to be that person who brought in the import. So that, that business, that part of the business has changed exponentially over the last few years. Um, to be the company of record means something different today than it did before Lacey. So um, that's the area where no one is really willing to source something that's questionable. Um, it's just not worth the risk of, of that. And, you know, whether whatever your perspective is on the Lacey Act, you know, from our perspective, we always look at anything that's going to help not deplete the natural resource, um, or if you're using lumber from a uh, forest that has endangered species or um, is being clear cut and there's no regrowth or there's no um, cycle in the, in the farm aspect of trees, then you know, that's, not, that's not the way we want to manage the forest around the world. Gibson guitar and the lumber liquidators has helped in that it's made a front page uh, story of it and more people are aware than otherwise might be. Right, I mean it's pretty, it's taken a, it's made an, an act that's been around for a hundred years uh, take on a whole new life that really just sat there and didn't do much of anything for the last century but it's been a very active uh, conversation in the market now for a while. Upcoming very shortly is your expo. And that seems to me to have grown exponentially every year. Talk about it. Yeah, well, we basically relaunched the show uh, two years ago. This is our third show under a, kind of a new blow everything up and rebuild it type platform. And uh, the first year we saw 35% growth. The second year we saw 25% growth. Um, this year we're seeing we have 50 new exhibitors just on the show floor alone. Um, our hotel block has increased by 35% over last year, so what that plays out to be in the attendance piece, you know, remains to be seen, but Nashville's a great city for drive-ins, so we know that a lot of people will maybe decide they don't have a job to do that week, and they, they maybe tried to leave the hole open, and they'll drive in if they can. Um, it's very accessible to a large demographic of our membership. I'm driving in. Yes, you're driving in. 